Nobody's coming to save us. And most of us are going to talk bad about each other behind each other's back. But I'm here to tell you tonight, every generational curse or whatever they call that bullshit is breakable. My grandfather didn't have a father. He dropped out of school in the third grade to raise his sisters and help his mother and worked in a lumber yard. By the time I got to third grade, I already was reading at fifth grade level. Let's go. By the time I got to third grade, they already knew that this boy's gonna go to college because a man who was functionally illiterate got a train. He learned how to drive a truck. And that's what he did. And he made sure his children valued education and his grandchildren today are good people in this community. So I don't want to hear what rappers don't do no more. All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving our praise, honor, and glory to Tiahawa, Ba'ashim Yawashai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honor so to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I want to learn this truth from and I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. And today, you know, I just want to go into this clip, you know, I came across, you know, pretty much Killer Mike talking about, you know, no one's going to save us, you know, which he's wrong. You know, to an extent, he's right, but he's wrong, you know. So I'm just going to bring out a few scriptures, Lord willing, this lesson is at a fine man, straight to the point. Now, he said no one is coming to save us, but that's false, you know. Our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming back to save us, you know. That's, that's literally what his name means. You know, he saves. He is salvation. You know, he delivers. And that's what he's coming to do. He's coming to deliver his people, you know, the nation of Israel, out of the hand of Esau Edom. You know, but it's going to start with the elect. You know, only the elect of the nation of Israel will be saved in this particular time, you know. So I'm going to start in the book of Matthew chapter 1. Verse 21, and it says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt name him, it's like it, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Yeah, man. Our Lord is coming back to save us, man. Especially, you know, during the time of Jacob's trouble, you know. <coughs> Excuse me, Slakia. You know, especially during the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, we're going to be, that's, that's what it says, you know, Jacob's trouble, we're going to be in trouble. You know, we're going to be in various situations to where we're going to be in danger, you know, and we're going to need to be saved, you know, and the Lord is going to deliver us out of these particular situations, you know, because again, what he doesn't understand is, is that, he said all these generational curses are BS. Well, not all of them, because again, we're up under curses, you know. We've been up under the curses ever since, you know, we broke the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments after we came out of Egypt, you know. These curses were placed upon us, you know, because again, the nation of Israel is a stubborn and stiff necked nation, man. This is a hard headed people. And he says that. These these curses can be broken. Now, yeah, man. In this current society, as far as financially, yeah, you can break that generational curse. You can get your family out of poverty. But overall, you know, you can't break, you know, the curses that are written in the book of Deuteronomy. You know, chapter 28. So I'm just going to grab a couple. No. Because again, man, this is what a lot of our people tend to fail to realize is that we're up under curses, man. We are cursed. Let me see. This is what I'm looking for. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 19. And it says, Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in. And cursed shalt thou be without goest out. So, man, we're cursed when we come into this earth. And we're cursed when we leave this earth, man. We won't be from up under these curses until our Lord Yahweh Shai comes back and delivers us, man. Because that's when the curses written in this chapter will be broken, you know. Because the Lord punished us, you know, for disobeying, you know. 
his law, statutes, and commandments. And he says, it's, it's BS, it's not BS, man. This is why our people are out here, you know, bugging out. You know? So I'm going to jump down to verse 22. It says, The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with a. Uh, Slucky, yeah, no, that's not what I'm looking for. But again, right here, verse 28, I mean, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 28. And it says, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. So, yeah, man, this is why a lot of our people out here going crazy. Because, again, you know, the Lord smote them with madness. That is a curse. You know, when you have our people out here pretty much bugging out, you know, they have demons on them as well. Because, again, we're up under these curses, man, and we need to be delivered from these curses, you know. And not only the curses, but we need to be delivered out of America, out of the hand of Esau, Edom, man. So, Killer Mike is wrong, you know. <clears throat> but he doesn't have the truth. Because the truth was only meant for the elect in this particular time, man. So, I'm just going to grab it real quick. Book of Romans, chapter 11, and verse 7 says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So yeah, man, he's clearly blind, because again, he doesn't see, you know, the end. You know, we see the end, and we clearly see that the end of America is going to be, you know, the beginning of the kingdom of heaven, man. So once this particular kingdom goes down, the kingdom of heaven is going to be risen up, you know, because again, we were only brought over here in America to serve out our punishment, man. We weren't going to be over here forever, but our people, you know, two thirds think that this is the end all be all, and that's not the case. And it's lucky, you know what, because that's what I meant to get. Before I grab that, come back to Deuteronomy 28. Because he said no one is going to buy us. Well, it's like, yeah, not buy us, but no one, no one's coming to save us. Now, what I meant to an extent, like, yeah. So this is Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. And it says that the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Talking about the land of Israel. And no, we wouldn't see our, our land again. You know, for a while. And it says, And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And yeah, man, that's the point I want to make by bringing out this particular verse. You know, no man shall buy you, meaning no one will redeem us. No one will come and get us out of, you know, this captivity. So, yeah, in that aspect, he's right, but he's still wrong. You know, because again, our Lord is coming back to save us, man. No man is coming back to save us, but our Lord is coming back to save us, man. So now I'm going to get the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. Because again, when we try to tell our people these things, they don't believe it. But again, it's not meant for them to get. You know, it's only meant for the elect. And it says, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they which also pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall will because of him, even so. Amen. Slakia. Verse 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. See, yeah, man, when, the, when our Lord Yahweh Shah returns, man, he's going to come back with the angels, man, with thousands and thousands of angels, you know, and the chariots, you know, those are those clouds, you know, because everyone that's on this earth, you know, that's still alive, you know, they're going to see him. 
And like they said, they're going to wail because of him. Because, again, a lot of people, you know, still deny the fact that, you know, the Lord is a so-called black man. You know, they still think he's that, you know, false image of Cesare Bogier. You know, they still think he looks like that. You know, but that's not the case. They still get his name wrong. But once they see, you know, an angry so-called black man standing on a humongous spaceship, you know, they're going to they're going to wait up, man. They're going to be in fear, you know, because everyone's going to know like this. This is him. You know, this is he who has been spoken of, man. And there's not going to be any more speculation at that point. You know, it's going to be evident. That this is the Messiah, that this is who's coming back to save his people, you know, and that's who's coming back. Lord willing, if we're the elect, he's coming back to save us, man. So, yes, our Lord is coming back to save us, dude. So this is the book of First Peter, chapter four and verse 17. And it says, for the time has come that judgment first. It's like yeah, that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh and if it first begin at us we shall be it's like you it says for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh and if it first begin at us what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of Yahweh, so yeah, man, the 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 judgment is gonna begin, you know, with us that know the truth, you know. But you know, it's also gonna trickle down to those that don't know the truth. But it's gonna start at those that do know first, you know. And we hope to receive that righteous judgment, you know, to be saved, you know, because ultimately the Lord is gonna deliver us, you know, from Himself. Yes, you know, Esau, Edom. Is going to be, you know, doing his thing pretty much, <clears throat> you know, doing a lot of murder pretty much. <clears throat> it's like you pretty much, you know, he's the Lord's whipping stick. So on a smaller scale, you know, yeah, the Lord is going to let Esau do his thing, you know, before he takes him out. But ultimately, the Lord is going to save us from himself because he's the one that's going to ultimately bring that destruction upon America, you know, because the spirit is going to be in, you know, those ICBM missiles that are going to destroy America, man. Verse 18, and it says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? See, yeah, man, the righteous are going to scarcely be saved, man. So again, Killer Mike is wrong. Our Lord is coming back, you know, and he's coming back to save his elect. It says they're going to scarcely be saved, man, because as the elect is being beamed up, those missiles are going to be coming down, man. I'm going to bring out a couple more. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. It says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now, yeah, man, once the Lord, you know, delivers Israel, you know, delivers the elect, you know, and establishes Israel as the head nation in the earth again, man, you know, the other nations, you know, they're going to flow onto us because they're going to have to learn, you know, the laws, the and commandments, they're going to have to keep the laws, man. There won't be any other way for them to live. You know, they have to learn, you know, to live the way we live, you know, because they know the way we live is, is righteous. It makes sense. You know, this is why the heathens pretty much live these abominable lifestyles that they live, even if they don't, you know, do anything completely off. You know, their lifestyles are off, man. So I'm going to end it with this. This book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 15. It says, Verily, thou art a power that hideth thyself. 
O power of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end, man. So yeah, the Lord is coming back to save his people, but only the elect, man. Two-thirds of the nation of Israel will be destroyed and reborn in the kingdom, you know, which ultimately they're going to be saved, you know, on the other side, you know. But again, that's what our Lord is coming back to do, you know. So again, Killer Mike, you're wrong. Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach is coming back to save us, man. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Shimmer Kakwadash, I like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from, and I like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully licked. Till the next time I 